Turn to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. About 1 o'clock this morning, 1, 1 1.30, the uh, destroyer came into my bedroom and he said, I'm going to kill you. And uh, I said, Lord, my life is in your hands, not his. But I went all night long and I probably got maybe one hour of sleep. I had, a, I had a struggle last night, very similar to what happened to me at the Kidron Valley right before I came back to the States and had that experience on the back porch. And the devil tried to kill me there too. No question about it. Now a lot of folks, you know, they don't believe in stuff like that, but I'm not here to try to persuade you one way or another. I know what happened to me last night. I've been at this a long time. And I knew that uh, I wasn't going to be able to get up and preach what I'm going to preach to you this morning without a fight. I've prayed about this two or three times this past week, and every time I prayed, God reaffirmed to me, this is what I want you to preach. Amen. And I said, all right, Lord, and the, and the fighting's over, and the struggle's over. I want to make sure this is it, so I want to preach what you want me to preach. But once that happened, then Satan came, and he told me this morning, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And he came into my bedroom and he was going to kill me. Greater is he that is in me Amen. than he that is in the world. Amen. Look at verse 22, Deuteronomy 32, verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Father, Lord, you know I'm just your messenger. That's all. <laughs> That's all I am, Lord. That's all I want to be. I ask you to use me now, Father, for the glory of God and thy holy name. Amen. You can be seated. The Bible said it's the point of the men once to die. And after this, the judgment. Death assuredly is going to come to you as it does to me or anyone else on this earth. It stalks us. David said, I know that there is but a step between me and death. I realize that. And I know the greatest thing you could ever do in this world is prepare for that moment that's going to come upon you. As sure as you sit there and you breathe this morning and watch me, you're going to die. Some of you, when you die, you'll be carried in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's a wonderful thing. That's something to rejoice about because it's a blessed event. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Some of you, though, you'll find yourself in shock. You'll find yourself in a place you never thought that you'd ever be. You'll find yourself in a place that you didn't think existed. You will be in a state of absolute shock and amazement because you'll find yourself falling into the bottomless pit. That's going to come to some of you. And when your soul and your spirit leaves your body, you're going to find yourself in a place of horrible torment and damnation. It's called the bottomless pit in Revelation Chapter number 19, 9 rather. When you find yourself in this bottomless pit, you'll find yourself falling. And all around you will be falling. As a matter of fact, the whole world that you inhabit at this time is going to be going downward, downward, and deeper and deeper into the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit in the Bible is called a place of fire and gnashing and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's a place that you don't want to go to. But as sure as you hear me this morning, you're going to go there if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to find yourself falling head over heels. Down you go deeper and deeper and deeper into a bottomless pit. Some of you will say this has got to be just a horrible dream. When you find yourself there, you'll say, I'm going to wake up from this. This can't be real. This can't be what's happening to me. I'm going to shock myself somehow or another. Let me wake up. But you can't wake up. Because what's happening to you is a reality and you're there and you can't tell anybody and you can't argue about it and you can't do anything to change it because now you're dead and you're gone and you're falling into a bottomless pit. Down you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the depths into the belly of hell. And there, my dear friend, awaits you the destruction, damnation, and torment that awaits all who reject Christ Jesus, our Lord. And deeper and deeper you go into the pit. What a horrible place. What a horrible place if you could think, my, what could I have done? What could I have possibly done to change this? Could I have said something? Could I have done something? Maybe it was the church that I went to. Maybe I wasn't good enough. Maybe I did this. Maybe I did that. 
But the problem is a very simple one. The only thing that can keep you out of this pit, the only thing that can keep you from hell is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of your church. It's not about your religion. It's not about who you are. It's not about how much money you have. You'll find yourself in a pit. And in this pit, there is no hope. All that go down into this place, give up all hope. For all that are there makes no difference. You'll find presidents. You'll find kings. You'll find prime ministers. You'll find queens. You'll find the rich and the famous. You'll find the greatest of the great. But in this place, everybody's a nobody. Nobody cares who you are. Nobody cares one bit what you've ever said or what you've ever done. Because you're falling in the pit. You're in damnation now. You're in judgment now. And it's over. Your life is past. How quickly it left. How quickly you drew that last breath. How quickly your 30, your 40, your 50, your 60 years passed while you were on planet Earth. It's all gone now. It's all in the past. And deeper you go into the pit of hell. The place you're going to is full of sounds, all kinds of sounds. Believe me, it's not quiet. Where you're headed, you'll hear screaming, you'll hear begging, you'll hear praying, you'll hear people down there with sorrow like you've never heard before. I guess you might say that that characterizes hell more than anything else is the sorrow. Sorrow all about you. Nothing but sorrow. Sorrowful cries and prayers. Oh God, oh God, just give me one more chance. Oh God, oh God, I thought you were a God of love and nothing like this could happen to me. Oh God, you hear them cry as they go deeper you've never heard praying you've never heard crying you've never heard wailing in your life like there is in hell every moment every hour every second everywhere it's crying and screaming and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and there is heat as you go deeper and deeper into the pit the flames of hell rise up above you and the heat begins to engulf you. Now it's no longer screaming and wailing and weeping because of a shock of finding yourself in a place like this. Now there's literal torment because you're burning. Hell is a place of fire. Hell is a place where the Bible said the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And you continue to fall deeper into a place that you never thought existed. You never thought for a moment that there was a place like hell. Oh, how you joked about it, how it was part of your how it was part of your vocabulary. You heard the word a thousand times every day, and the reason you did is because you were desensitized to it. Since everybody's using the word, it no longer has the power and meaning that it once had. For hell is a real place. My soul, my soul, if it cries from hell, what could be worse than that? My friend, tell me today, what could be worse for you than to find yourself falling head over heels and burning and screaming as you go down into hell? You say, preacher, prove to me there is no hell. My dear friend, one second after you close your eyes in this world, you'll Lift them up in that place. I don't have to prove it to you. It's inevitable. It's waiting for you. And my dear friend, hell has the upper hand. For it's been there. It'll be there. And your life is just a fleeting vapor. It's here today. And it's gone tomorrow. And much quicker than you think, you could be falling into the pit of hell. All oh, the sounds of hell. Can you imagine the preachers in hell that are saying, I preached in your name. I did mighty wonderful things in your name. I did this in your name. I did that in your name. And you might hear him say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Just because a man is called a man of the cloth, just because he's got a Bible, just because he's a so-called reverend, that doesn't keep him out of hell. I've known a bunch of reverends down through the years. I would give you a dime for their salvation. Hell is a place of eternity, friend. And it is for sure, it is more real than we are today. The people of hell are the people that you don't want to be around. It's the murderer, it's the rapist, it's the abortionist, it's the thief, it's the liar. It's the one who steals people and carries them away to be sold. Hell is a place of the worst kind, the worst of the worst. And that's where you're going to spend eternity. It's going to be with a crowd like that, with a bunch you don't want to be around. And yet, my dear friend, that's where you're going. You're going to a place where it's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Who said that, preacher? I didn't say that. The Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ said that. He said more about hell than anybody in the Bible. Did you know that? Did you understand that the Son of
of God in the New Testament tried to warn us. He tried to tell us. He said, don't fear him that can destroy the body or kill the body. But he said, yea, I'll forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him that hath power to destroy soul, both body and soul in hell. Are you going to hell, dear friend? Where are you going? You say, there is no hell. Oh, yes. How do you know that? Prove that to me. There is no hell. You don't know. You've never been over there. You've never crossed the bar. You've never shut your eyes in this world and raised them up in that one. I believe the Bible, as surely as I stand before you this morning, that Bible warns me about hell. And if you don't know the Lord, that's where you're headed. What did you do, you say? What have I done? What have I possibly done to deserve this place? How can I do? What? How can I stay out of hell, you might cry. This morning, if you ask that question, that would be smart on your part. To stay out of hell, there's only one name that can keep you out of hell, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. That's what that cross is about. That's what that crown of thorns is about. That's what the passion is about. That's what the message is about. That's what the Bible is about. That's what the pulpit is about. That's what the preacher is about. It's about keeping you out of hell. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that can keep you out of hell. Oh, Abraham said, son, remember. You know what he said to the rich man? He said, son, remember. Think about that memory. That memory in hell will be more vivid than it ever was here. Because that's all you got left when you go to hell. You don't have anything else. You've lost your dignity. You've lost your personality. You've lost your life. You've lost your possessions. Your family's gone. You've looked at the face of that wife or that husband that little child of the blessed ones in this world for the last time what you see around you now is the face of the contortions of those that are changing from what humanity looks like into their devil into their father the devil you're looking at the second death the dying of the soul and that's what awaits those that go to hell it is called the second death the dying of the soul the distorted features the monstrosities that are about you the weeping and the wailing and the crying and the memories oh how the memories how they eat at your soul how the memories because you remember the good times you remember life when you enjoyed it you remember a breath of fresh air you remember a drink of cold water you remember your friends you remember all the memories they'll haunt you and they'll torment you in hell you'll never forget as a matter of fact you'll probably remember everything that ever happened that was good in this world because that's all you've got when you go to hell is the memory son remember Abraham said son remember I am in hell you say you finally admit that you're condemned you finally admit that you're in a place now that you can't change there's no argument in hell there's no debating in hell there's no papers written in hell there's no religions in hell there's nothing in hell but condemned sinners and they're screaming every moment that they are existing and in hell they burn and they cry and they weep and they wail and they gnash in their teeth and you continue to fall deeper and deeper and deeper when you think it is the worst it could be it gets worse when you think it's as hot as it could possibly be it gets hotter when you think you're as far far from God and far far from your loved ones you continue to fall it's called the bottomless pit for a reason there is no bottom to it deeper and deeper and deeper into condemnation and all about you come to a point when it's nothing but sorrow and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. No singing, no joy, no peace, no reprieve, not a single moment of anything but sorrow and damnation. Hell has engulfed you. It's wrapped its arms about you. It's pulling you deeper and deeper into its belly. You say, preacher, could such a horrible thing like that really exist? The Lord Jesus Christ said it existed. He warned you about that place. I know you haven't heard anything about it from the reverend. I know the churches say nothing about it today, but that doesn't change the reality. You're going to die. And when you die, it's going to happen just like it did to Maurice Rawlings when he had a man on a treadmill. And Maurice Rawlings is a cardiologist in Chattanooga. And the man on the treadmill fell over and he began to, and he just literally went into a state where he was dying. And the, and the preacher and, and, the, and, the, and the cardiologist brought him back. And when he brought him back, the man said, don't let me go. Don't let me go. Oh, 
oh, I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning. Who made that up? Where do you think that came from? This came from a cardiologist, a doctor. He said this man was burning. He was screaming, don't let me go. He went home and dusted off his Bible and Maurice Rawlings got right with God and spent the rest of his life warning people about that place called hell. Amen. And that's what I'm trying to say to you this morning. I'm trying to warn you about that place called hell. When you think you can go no deeper, you go deeper and you continue to fall until all of a sudden, from nowhere and no warning, hell itself is shaken. The very foundations of hell, something much greater than hell has taken hold of this place. Something has shaken the very place that you are in and when it shakes it, it begins to change directions. Instead of going down, now you're coming up. You're rising up from the pit. You rise higher and higher and higher until you finally come up out of the pit. When you come up, you realize there's one above you that is so much greater than you are. Everything you left before is gone. There is no earth anymore. There are no homes anymore. There are no planets. There are no stars. There's nothing but a huge throne right up there situated in the midst of the clouds, a great white throne, and you don't want to be there. For something inside you tells you that the terror of that throne is even worse than the terror that you just came out of. You're going to stand before a great white throne and there you're going to be judged as you approach the crowds on either side. You can see the faces all over the place. Faces of people looking at you and they're looking at you with sorrow and nothing can be done about it because you are about to be judged for your sins. The books are opened and they look for your name and it's not found. They look from one to the other and your name is nowhere to be found. A hand points off and when you see where that finger is pointing you say to yourself oh Lord God the horror of horrors I'm going to a place even worse than hell that finger is pointing to a lake of fire and brimstone depart from me ye that work iniquity are the last words you hear from the mouth of him that sit upon upon the throne and they carry you off and cast you into that lake of fire and brimstone the memory of the wicked shall rot and so shall you. Your eternal destiny is nothing but sorrow, damnation, there to burn forever. Oh, preacher, what a horrible thing. I know it's horrible. That's why I fought it. I went on, I got on my knees and said, God, this is not what you want me to preach. I preached this message a long time ago. Surely this is not what you want me to preach right now. And the Lord said, preach hell, son. I want you to preach hell. I want you to preach hell to them. I want them to hear it. They need to hear it. Somebody's going to be there that needs to hear this. This this message is for somebody here right now in this house today and for somebody watching this thing on the internet and for somebody that will watch it later on YouTube or somewhere else. This is your final warning. Take it to heart. You may die tonight and if you die tonight without the Lord Jesus, you're going to a devil's hell. The greatest tragedy of hell is not that people are there. And it's not, my friend, that they're there with no hope. The greatest tragedy of hell is the simple fact you don't have to go. You can make a choice today. If I were you, I'd get up out of my seat. I'd run down here. I'd fall down here in this altar. I'd take hold of that. I'd, I'd grab something. I'd take the Bible. I'd hold it to, near to me. I'd pull it next to my heart. And I'd say, Jesus, save me. I don't want to go to hell, Jesus. Save my soul. Would he save you? Yes, he'd save you. That's what he came for. He came to save you. Why don't you do it? Why don't you get up from where you are? Why don't you come down here? I prayed with that young woman right over there, and I want you to pray for her. She's talking to God about her soul. Are you here today? Are you interested? In, are you concerned about your soul? Are you concerned about where you're going? Why don't you do something about it while you can? Get up from where you are. Our problem today is that our minds are so numbed. And we've been so desensitized. We've seen everything. You've seen death and suffering and dying. You've watched it all until the reality of hell no longer shocks you and casts terror into your heart. Please, in the name of Jesus, come down here now. And get a hold of God, and he'll save your soul. 
I'm the messenger. I'm free. I'll sleep tonight. I've done my job. Father, in Jesus' name, I deliver them to thee now. In thy holy name we pray. And for Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. Let's stand up and sing this morning.